six people in a regular panel van, but that's what this next van has achieved. Uh, funnily enough, it's my own van. After 13 years of owning a camper van, 10 years of running a camper van business, and a couple of years of trying out lots of the vans on our book, we finally settled on what for us as a family was the perfect layout, and I'm looking forward to showing it to you. Welcome to Quirky Campers, the home of handmade camper vans. And this is the lovely Frida. So why did we decide that we were ready for a new camper van? Our last camper van, Bella, was too small. small. She, well, she didn't have enough beds. So we thought, right, let's do another conversion. And we started with the name. And as soon as Daddy said Frida, we were like, ah, oh, yes, perfect. And then we could make it like a Frida Carlo van. What do you like about Frida Carlo? Mm, Carlo. She, she has really cool clothes yeah. and paintings. Yeah. Really cool paintings. What do you like best about Frida? My favourite. Maybe other. Yeah, my favourite. Yeah, other. <laughs> Okay. What's your favourite bit? <laughs> that is a very good question, Autumn. My favourite bit is sitting around the table when we're travelling because you guys used to get really bored when we were travelling along and you'd want to stop and get out, obviously, because it's really boring. And now we can play and eat sandwiches. Generally, we do recommend to people, build it around how many of you are in your family and then see if you can find a way to stick one more seat and one more bed in just to give you more flexibility and especially if you're going to rent it out then it makes it accessible to lots more people. Do you think we should show them inside? Mm, yeah. All right, let's do it. The first thing that most people notice um, are these stunning upholstery fabrics. So I was looking for something that was inspired by Frida Kahlo, her artwork, also just her, her clothing, her love of colour. Um, and as soon as I saw this, I knew that this was what I needed to have. And so everything else was kind of planned around it, essentially. Um, what we've got here are six belted seats. So as I said, we wanted this to be a camper van that could uh, accommodate families of six. Um, this is a uh, swivel captain seat. Um, we just felt that it really made sense both to provide additional seating, but also because um, it just really opens up the sense of space. It's also the most comfortable seat in the house, so I like to uh, relax here and read a book when I get a chance. Um, one of the real central features of Frida's design was the ability to have four belted seats around a table when we were, so that we could use them when we were traveling. Um, and so that's, that just allows us to do longer journeys because we can eat snacks, we can um, drink water. We've got these uh, cup holders in the middle of the table so everyone can have a glass of water. The kids can do colouring in, they can play with their Lego um, and so on. So it just makes journeys so much more enjoyable. And that was one of the things that we tried in another van that we fell in love with and thought that we really wanted to have in Frida. Figuring out how to then get this to turn into a double bed was a bit of a puzzle. Um, we finally found this great product, which was these seat frames with the inbuilt seat belts. Uh, it was crash tested. And it basically provided a frame around which we could build uh, the boxes, the seats and the bed system. These uh, four belted seats can be, uh, and this table can be dropped down and pulled out and turned into a full size double bed. So I'll show you how that works now. Uh, this gets lifted away. The standard Fiamma leg is stowed away. There's a little lip on either side to catch the table. Drops into place slides back and then there's a metal frame with an extra piece hidden away that slots together there's a little sle metal sleeve here that pulls across like that there's another one just behind me here same process and then the backs of these seats come off and then each of these pieces slots onto the frame and then the cushions drop in to make up the double so most of the time, uh, David will be driving up front and I will be sat around the table with the three kids. But I'm certainly looking forward to a day when they'll be able to take care of themselves and I'll be able just to sit up front. Um, but obviously it was really important that we had a passenger seat because you never know what kind of formations people will be travelling in. 
Um, so we've got plenty of storage. And one of the things that we really wanted to do with Frida was to think through all the things we needed to store and then make sure we had a place for each of those because we hadn't done that previously and that was something we'd struggled with. So we knew that the bulkhead space up here was going to be where we stored our mattress topper, our front window blinds and our bedding. Um, so that's the perfect size for those things to keep them tucked out of the way. Um, this actually up here was a perfect shoe storage, which makes all the difference because in a camper van space, Anything that's not put away is on the floor and you're tripping over it, quite possibly swearing at it. Um, so having somewhere that fits all of our shoes is a real godsend. We've also got this storage above here, which tends to be for um, toiletries, but also for games and books and toys, anything that the kids might need. Um, of course, it's very important that we have our Frida Kahlo puzzle. Um, but normally we have a whole range of, of books and games up here, um, further storage space up here. All of these close and stay closed really nice and securely. There's also lots of cute little additional storage actually in the window frames, both in this window and in the kitchen window. Um, so you can kind of tuck little bits here out of the way, things that are in use, maybe your phone, maybe your book, particularly when you're going to bed. Uh, we've got our Frida Kahlo coasters. I had a lot of fun going to town on the Frida Kahlo theme. The other thing that I requested from our wonderful converters was a place that was just by the table where we could store colouring in and small quantities of toys and Lego that could be accessed while we were travelling. And so they created us this gorgeous oak little magazine rack here. Personally, I'm a big fan of curtains as opposed to blinds because there just seems to be a lot less to go wrong. Um, so I actually didn't decide what fabric the curtains should be made out of until the very end, at which point um, I asked Anita whether there was any fabric that we had leftover pieces of so we wouldn't have to buy more. And it was the beautiful teal velvet. Um, all the fabric that we've used is velvet. It was a bit of a bold choice, but so far it's kept really well. Seems to be really easy to clean. Obviously, I got the really hard wearing stuff that could be wiped down um, and it's just useful. Um, so we've just got these really simple uh, tie backs. They've also got magnets in them, which can attach to um, the lamp here or can also be used on the window frames. And then these just really simple um, little curtain hooks with clips. So that's a kind of, other than the hemming, uh, that's a no-so solution for people who are a bit intimidated by making curtains. Another thing that I was aware of, having spent a lot of time in vans with children, um, is the fact that if you don't have something to wipe your feet on as you come into the van, you will end up with a very muddy floor. So I wanted a doormat, but I also knew how often they get tripped over, um, <laughs> get caught up in the door, whatever it might be. And so it's a really simple thing, but again, it just makes a huge difference, which is to have the mat actually sunk into the floor. Um, and I'm really, really glad that we did that. And I, I identified which mat I wanted first so that we could do it to the right dimensions. And then I would just go and replace it with the exact same one. Frida has a two solar panels on the, on the roof, which are connected to the leisure battery and they provide plenty of charge. In addition, there's also a connection to the engine so that when you're driving, main battery is charging. It will also charge the leisure battery as well. This was a, a later addition that came from using the van and kind of really getting to know it and noticing what was missing. And one thing that we realised as we went camping with family and friends was that um, obviously if people are camping in tents, they don't have anywhere to charge their phones. And so a lot of people were asking to charge in our van. So we actually added an additional charging point here and a phone holder here. And we would generally always have at least one phone charging up in our power bank, uh, which thanks to our very um, high capacity leisure battery and solar panels is, is just not an issue. We never run out of charge. Um, in here is where we actually have the battery and uh, all of the fuses. It just makes it really easy to access. And then it also acts um, as a footstool for this chair and even additional seating. On the front, we've got a little panel here which shows you the consumption voltage of the battery at the moment. And then it also tells you the amps and watts uh, that you're you're, you're using. And we've got uh, a light switch for each of the different circuits, including a, 
switch for the, the cabin lights there, that's the, um, the bunk lights, a uh, master switch for the bunk lights. A couple of uh, USB sockets up here to run the rest of the stuff. There's another um, volt meter here just to give you an indication of your current temperature. So these uh, seat backs, I think, are a pretty clever design. They're just on a hinge. And what that means is that you can easily push it back for when you want to put a car seat on here. Again, one thing that we'd experience in vans, um, which did have a bench around a table, was that we really struggled to put the kind of big early um, car seats in them. This way you can just make a lot more space and then they can still fit in with the table up. Um, we also have Isofix on this uh, seat bench, so that's been um, really useful for a lot of our customers as well. We've got quite a lot of storage under here. It's obviously not the most accessible storage. So, you know, as with any storage, you think about what you want to put under here. Um, under the benches, we tend to put uh, the awning, the fire pit, Kits, generally things that we kind of need to transport um, but we're only going to be taking out once and not taking in and out a lot of times um, we've also got the chock under here as well so it's quite easy just to get inside and of course what is a quirky camper without accessories so that's something we have a lot of fun with so we've got a diesel heater that's also really useful for weight because um, it just uses diesel from the tank as opposed to having to have a separate uh, LPG gas tank um, we found it works really well you're never worried about running out of fuel because you're always going to have some diesel in the tank um, we got one of the kind of cheaper uh, Chinese versions the Challenger it basically switches on and off and, and heats up the space in seconds so we're pretty pleased with it so far there are a lot of things that I love about this kitchen um, I wouldn't describe myself as a chef um, but you know we do like to eat fresh food and actually I prefer cooking in a camper van than cooking at home so one of the things that I knew that I wanted was to have additional pop-up counter space for as and when we needed it um, there are layouts that actually come out even further into the sliding door and that works well for some people but we kind of knew with lots of people coming in and out and going past each other that wasn't going to work for us um, but if I do manage to chuck out the kids while I cook dinner, then I can take this out and use it as and when needed. Um, it's actually also turned out to be a really great place for just drying the, uh, the dishes. So I generally put a tea towel over here and then all the wet dishes go on there and dry off very nicely. I wanted a Belfast sink because for its size, you just get a lot more space for doing washing up and there's nothing more annoying than not actually having something to put your plates in. Um, this, uh, the way that we've done the tap actually was inspired by when we lived in the porter cabin for a few years and we had a foot switch to switch our tap on and we found it really useful because when you've got really muddy hands, you just turn it on with your foot and you don't need to get the tap dirty. Um, so we've got two options. You can either do it with a foot or with your hand there. Um, but that's just quite a nifty feature. I don't know why many people don't have it in their houses, in fact. So again, we've got a really simple technical solution to uh, our water. Um, we didn't go for an underslung tank to be careful with weight, um, but we've got two water containers here, a 20 litre and a 10 litre. Obviously, they're both filled up when you come to collect the van, um, and then you can just easily take them out and, and refill them at a tap, or with a hose if you prefer. Um, our shower, which I'll show you in, the mo in a moment, is uh, run from here. And the idea is you just simply boil up a kettle of water, mix it with some cold water in the smaller of the tanks, and then you can drop the end um, of the shower hose in here and it's ready to use at the back of the van. Uh, we've got a blackboard down here, which the kids enjoy a lot, as you can imagine. And sometimes we like to write messages to our customers or they leave us messages on there as well, which is lovely. This is just, again, treating ourselves to a nice little Joseph Joseph rainbow set, but very handy for a camper van because it just all sticks together on here and you've got all the utensils you need. Here we've got a very comprehensive set of herbs and spices. I mean, why be without when you can build them in? Um, so yeah, you can really go to town and do some proper cooking here. Now, I said I wasn't such a fan of roller blinds, but we have done it in the kitchen. Um, it is really important that you don't have loose curtains hanging by a gas cooker. cooker. That is a fire hazard. 
And so um, we do have this roller blind here, which is perfectly fine, does the job, um, and means that we can go and play. So again, we kind of designed this storage around the things that we were going to put in it. And so we've got this cupboard here, which has got cups and glasses and wine glasses and so on. Um, also even got a portable blender for those of you who like to start your day with a smoothie. We've got um, some really nice plate racks here and that's actually also somewhere that you can uh, just dry the plates when you're done with them because there's tiles at the bottom to catch the water and if you want to get in there you can just open it from here. Got bowls up here and then we've got some dinkier shelves here which come with a proper coffee making pot, a rather beautiful teapot and then tea and coffee. So you've got everything you need to get going because nobody should have to wake up in the morning and not at least be able to start their day with a cup of tea. These cup hooks were also a later addition um, after we'd been using the van for a while we realised that actually it's quite nice when you're staying in one place to be able to get all your cups out um, to have them on display especially when they're as pretty as this and it also makes it easier to access them. We've got just a regular two hob cooker here um, but it, it's quite a good size so you can fit two proper sized pots on it. We were originally going to have an oven but again because we were concerned about whether we were going to have enough weight um, payload for six people we ended up going for just the hob instead. I'm quite pleased we did it in the end because we decided to just go for one of these which is just a stove top oven so you can pop that on there and although you can't roast a chicken um, there are a lot of other things that you can do in here, apparently including even making pizza, which we're yet to try. Um, you could do in a regular oven and you can divide your recycling as you go. If you don't build it in, what you'll find is you just use a tallyer bag and everything gets chucked in together and it's not very nice. Um, and this is a super pleasing system to also make sure that we and our customers do actually do our recycling when we're on the road. So essentially the entire layout was constructed around the idea of these triple bunks which we had borrowed from another van that was on our website called Everest. And what was really smart about Everest and what we really took from the design was because it was a, an H3, you just get that extra bit of space, it's really, really tall, and it means you can have three proper bunks that the kids can sit up in as opposed to <laughs> like coffins or things that need to kind of be flipped out or, or taken out or moved around. Um, so they've each got their own dedicated bunk. They know it's theirs because they've got their own personalised little cupboard in it, which I'm sure they'll be very happy to show you. Um, each bunk also has its own porthole, uh, including a curtain to cover it. So these are full <laughs> blackout um, and a, uh, its own little reading light. Now, something else that we discovered from testing out other vans was that our kids, rather than going to sleep, just like switching the light on and off. Um, so we decided that we needed a master switch where we could switch off all of their bunk lights uh, without them being able to switch them back on. So that was a handy little addition. My favourite bit about my bunk is the little cupboard in here where we can put things. This is a cup holder. You put the cup in there and then you can put it on there if you want. This is another of my favourite features. So something that I knew that I really wanted was that we all had our own clothes storage and something that actually would be really easy to pack up and use and unpack. So in the end, we settled on these basket drawers. And what's great about these is you can actually take them out really easily, take them into the house, fill them up with your clothes and then pop them back in. So it makes packing super easy. It also makes it really easy to decide how much to bring because basically if it fits in the basket, it's coming. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to leave it at home. Um, we do have some extra storage up here, though, for the bulky items. So, um, like beach towels, and um, we quite often put our wetsuits in there, swimming costumes, that kind of thing. Um, there's a lovely big cupboard up here for all of that stuff. And then we've got a further cupboard down here, which at some point is actually going to be a wardrobe with, um, with a hanging rail. But at the moment, um, it's just functioning quite well for other things that we need to pop in there. Down here, we have our toilet, which is stowed away, but can be easily pulled out.
So um, our kids are certainly very happy just to use this in the corridor like this, so we don't have a separate cubicle for it. We do have a curtain that pulls um, over this side here if anybody does want some more privacy. Um, it's just a really simple uh, chemical toilet. We use the green liquid rather than the blue um, to be a bit more friendly to the environment. Uh, but we have found it just the most straightforward and, and smell-free and hassle-free solution to the toilet issue, which I think becomes more important when you have small people. Um, but it's also important for lots, lots of other people, and um, we certainly want to make this as accessible as possible for our customers. Another of our favourite parts about Frida was actually a bit of a happy accident. These bunks were initially solid all the way down the back. And again, when we had a, a bit of worry about the weight, um, one of the things that we decided to do was to cut these holes out, just simply to get rid of some wood and get rid of some weight. Um, as soon as we'd done it, we realised that actually this just opened the whole thing up and was so nice for the kids to be able to lie in their bunks and look out at the world. Um, so, And also provides an amazing climbing frame for them to get in and out and climb up and around, especially if I'm in the kitchen and I don't want them kind of pushing past me. Um, it's really handy they can get in here. Um, here we've just got some nifty little coat hooks. Again, if you don't think about where your coats are going to go, they end up on the floor getting in the way, which is quite frustrating. Um, so we've got coat hooks there to keep them all out of the way. This is where our shower comes out. So as I mentioned, if you drop the other end of it in the tank just under the sink, and then the shower comes out here, it can really extend quite a lot and then depending on whether you're just kind of hosing down muddy children or you know hosing yourself off in your wetsuit or whether you want to have a proper full uh, nungi pungi shower as we would like to call it um, then you can use the uh, the shower tent if you would like to hire Frida for your own adventure click the link here looking to build your own camper van you should check out our brand new ebook, Building a Camper Van. As well as technical advice on things like carpentry, gas, and electrics, it also includes dozens of layout ideas and advice on things like choosing your base vehicle or what to do if you'd like to rent your camper van out. Click the link to find out more. <laughs>